There's no easy way to say this. I might be a secret Martian. And if I am, then so are you. I'm Sophie, and welcome to The Countdown. At a conference last month, geochemist Stephen Benner argued life on Mars might have developed before life on Earth. In fact, the red planet could have seeded the life on our own world. About four billion years ago, Mars was drier than Earth. According to Benner, this created a better environment for molecules to assemble into the genetic material RNA, which was probably the first biological molecule to develop. Once this basic building block formed, how could it have traveled all the way to Earth? Benner suggests that when asteroids hit Mars and sent rocks hurtling into space as meteorites, life could have hitched a ride. After all, we know Martian meteorites can reach Earth because we found some of them. So, are we actually Martians? Maybe not. As astrobiologist Caleb Scharf writes on his Scientific American blog, Life Unbounded, the case isn't so clear cut. Even though the young Mars was drier than Earth, it still had liquid water, much more than it has today. Scharf also points out that scientists haven't reached a consensus about the first steps in the assembly of RNA. There are a few different chemical pathways that lead to RNA, which means it could have developed in more than one environment. Do you think we came from Mars? Let us know in the comments. The Chinese Lunar Exploration Program is preparing their unmanned Chang'e 3 probe for a trip to the moon and back. The probe, which is named after a moon goddess, will be the first Chinese spacecraft to land on a planetary body without being destroyed in the process. But as you might guess from the name, Chang'e 3 isn't China's first expedition to the moon. They sent spacecraft into lunar orbit in 2007 and again three years later. The 2010 mission then went on to explore deep space. Chang'e 3 will also orbit the moon, but unlike its predecessors, it will also land. Then, if it's still in one piece, it will return to Earth. The probe is scheduled to launch by the end of this year. About 80% of Greenland lies under a massive ice sheet more than a kilometer thick and roughly 1.7 million square kilometers in size. But scientists have used radar to peer through the sheet, and they found a hidden rift longer than the Grand Canyon. From 2009 to 2012, NASA's Operation Ice Bridge gathered information about the Greenland ice sheet. They sent a plane full of imaging equipment to skim over its surface. By analyzing the radar data, scientists mapped the features concealed beneath the ice. As they explain in the journal Science, the researchers discovered a canyon 750 kilometers long and up to 800 meters deep. In comparison, the Grand Canyon is only 446 kilometers long, but in some places it's more than twice as deep. According to the scientists, water probably flowed through the Hidden Canyon millions of years ago, before the ice sheet formed. What happens when you drop a wrench in space? Well, you're pretty much screwed. Take the incident in 2008, when an astronaut lost a tool bag outside the International Space Station. The instruments drifted away, eventually falling towards Earth and burning up in our atmosphere. Up on the ISS, resupply missions are few and far between, making it difficult to replace equipment. Unless you have a 3D printer, which is why NASA is planning to send a small printer to the space station next year. The device, about the size of a microwave, will help astronauts replace small plastic parts and tools, as well as demonstrating how well 3D printing works in microgravity. If the pint-sized printer does well, a larger machine may become a permanent installation on the ISS. And perhaps someday, a mission far from Earth will use a 3D printer to become self-sustaining. They could mine asteroids for the raw materials to feed their printer. We can't recreate the Big Bang, but we can simulate what happened immediately afterwards. Researchers at the University of Chicago put cesium atoms in a vacuum chamber and chilled them to just above absolute zero. At this ultra-cold temperature, the atoms acted collectively, vibrating like sound waves in air. These vibrations are called Sakharov oscillations, and they can also be found in the cosmic microwave background, which is the echo left over from the Big Bang. Within the laboratory's vacuum chamber, you can see a pattern similar to the microwave background, but on a much smaller scale. Just imagine our universe shrunk to about the diameter of a human hair. The simulation also develops a lot faster than the actual universe did. 
In about 10 milliseconds, the cesium atoms created the same pattern the microwave background reached after 380,000 years. With its small scale and fast speed, the simulation will help researchers study the conditions in the youthful universe. And that's your countdown. Links to all of these stories are in the description below. Also, don't forget to visit the Space Lab channel on YouTube and subscribe. For Scientific American, I'm Sophie Bushwick. And if you think astronauts have trouble holding on to stuff in space, just watch this. Straight up through the atmosphere. Now you know you've got the space station right up there. That... Oh, oh, it's doing gravity.